We know that in America, we waste 30 to 40 percent of our food, and that's huge. So our goal, again, is to help people, first of all, become more aware and then realize that there are a lot of things they can do to reduce that amount. Walk Kansas, which begins March 17th and runs through May 11th, is an eight-week K-State Research and Extension Health Initiative that encourages people to be physically active, consume more fruits and vegetables, and incorporate exercises to improve strength and balance. The program also features a variety of educational topics that help these lifestyle changes become a habit. This includes information on nutrition, recipes, eating in season, food safety, and food waste. On today's Sound Living, reducing food waste. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. Registration for Walk Kansas is now underway at county and district extension offices and online at walkkansas.org. State coordinator for the program, Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist Sherilyn Jackson, says the eight-week challenge is a well-rounded health initiative. That's right, Jeff. It's an eight-week health initiative from K-State Research and Extension. We've been doing this since 2001, so Walk Kansas has been around for a little while. And the goal of Walk Kansas is to get as many people as we can that, that sign up for the program to meet at least the minimum goals for physical activity. And that's 150 minutes of the moderate to vigorous intensity activity per week. And it can be walking, gardening, anything that gets your heart rate up to where you can, to for moderate, to be able to carry on a conversation but not sing. And so anything at that intensity level and even a little bit higher is what we recommend. And the teams get to pick which challenge they want to go for. That's right. There are three challenges, depending on how hard the team wants to work, what their goals are. And our Eight Wonders Walk is the minimum one that that helps them reach those minimum guidelines for physical activity. And then we have another trail that requires about four hours of physical activity per week. And then another one, the highest one, that requires six hours per person per week. They are teams, but you're really doing this on your own. That's right. You don't have to do the activities or walk together. You can do it on your own. You log your minutes of activity online, and the website converts it to miles on our tracking system. If you're somebody who just can't find a team to be on, they can sign up and you can place them on a team? That's right. And when they go into the online system, just select that they're signing up as an individual, and then the local extension office can help place them on a team. And that's all done um, online again, www.walkkansas.org. And they'll receive communication what team they're on and go from there. I mentioned that this is a health initiative, and that's where the rest of the program, I think, really excels is the fact that there are so many other things that are encompassed with Walk Kansas. One of those is health and nutrition. And along those same lines, we're this year kind of focusing a little bit on reducing food waste, something that is a major problem. It really is a major problem, and I think that more and more people are becoming aware of that, and that's our goal for Walk Kansas, to help people become more aware, first of all, and then implement just a few of those strategies to help reduce food waste in their own home. We know that in America, we waste 30 to 40 percent of our food, and that's huge. So our goal, again, is to help people first of all, become more aware and then realize there are a lot of things they can do to reduce that amount. Sandy Proctor, a K-State Research and Extension Nutrition Specialist and a frequent guest on Sound Living, is here to discuss some of the changes we can make and steps we can take to reduce food waste. Jeff, what Sherilyn says is exactly right. It is a growing concern with food waste, not just in the U.S., but all around the world. We realize that If we're going to have enough food to feed the ever-expanding population, we need to be sure that we are using what we have wisely. And so it starts with each of us. And so this is something that in our nutrition education and especially in nutrition education with limited resource audiences, we've talked about for quite a while. You may think that it sounds sort of contrary to what you might believe that people, especially with limited incomes, might have more chance to waste food than than even some of the main population. And it isn't always the case, but it can be because we encourage people to buy in bulk. And we encourage people to, you know, get large quantities of foods and then store them properly and make that stretch and save money that way. Well, for many of us, having the right way to store foods isn't always easy. Maybe refrigeration is, is not something that is real dependable for us or 
the ability to freeze foods when we get them and repackage them. So sometimes some of those those steps that we think of as real basic just aren't going to work the best for everybody. So what we've found out about decreasing food waste is it's very individual, but there are rules that really apply to everybody. Some of these kind of go back to what we talk about when we're just talking about ways to shop. We're talking about shopping smart, and as you mentioned, not overbuying. Exactly. And the number one thing that we would recommend people to do is make a list. Make a grocery list and then stick to it. Don't impulse buy. Don't be drawn off by the giant package of whatever it is when really you just need a small package of two or three. Yes, it can be less expensive to buy in bulk, but not if you're not going to use it wisely. And so that's where that Being a smart shopper is the number one thing we can do to prevent food waste. Along those same lines, making an inventory of what we already have? Absolutely. Don't buy it if you've already got a package half opened and half used at home of whatever it is. And another recommendation that I found really interesting and spent some time thinking about is pay attention to what's in your garbage. What are you wasting? What are you likely to be really not as diligent about carefully using as you might be. And then what does that tell you? Is this something that you probably shouldn't be buying? Or, and I know I've done this, buy an ingredient that is exactly what you need for a recipe or even two, and then struggle to figure out how to use it up or even if it's keepable for the next one. And so then then there's some sort of waste built into it. So pay attention to where you're wasting food yourself. Be aware of it at first. It seems as though fruits and vegetables are probably some of the biggest areas, not only because of spoilage, but just because we don't always use all of that product. Absolutely. So there's quite a few steps you can do to really keep some of those perishables sort of in the front of your mind and and being used wisely. Organize your refrigerator. Make sure that your produce is stored properly, that you have it in the crisper part with the right amount of humidity. Most of those have an adjuster where they let it have extra or less humidity in it for optimal storage. Making sure that you refrigerate foods that need to be refrigerated and store at room temperature other fruits and vegetables that really should be stored that way. For example, you want to keep honeydew or cantaloupe, broccoli in the refrigerator, but you want to keep tomatoes and avocados and bananas, of course, at room temperature. So don't store things wrong and shorten their lives that way. I always think about some of the other things that we cut up, some of those root vegetables. A lot of that, what we consider to be kind of the throwaway part, can be used in other ways, especially as a a stock. Well, that's, that's number 10 on the list. Save vegetable trimmings for broth. Put all of those tip ins that you may have from things like you said, the ends or the outer peels on things. And they can be used and bagged together and actually cooked as a stock or a broth and reduce your waste that way. And another thing that I think people don't think of, but this again is something that's pretty easy to undertake, especially if you have a space to use it. And that is, it's not really food waste if you're composting and using that compost then to go back into your garden or something. And that's not going to be an answer for everyone. I know people in apartments and Students maybe in in residence halls may not be able to think about composting as a way to reduce waste. But for the person who has the capacity to do that, to put those nutrients back out into the soil and then work them into a garden again is really a good way to think of that recycle arrow diagram where you're reusing and reducing and recycling all of those nutrients back into the soil. Kind of mentioned reusing, and that makes me also think of the fact that sometimes we have one meal on Monday, and we could make some of that into a meal for Wednesday, but we don't always do that on the calendar, and we really need to plan out those meals as well. I think that's a good point. I think planning meals is is right up there with making that list and sticking to it, but also plan for leftovers. Plan that there's going to be a a space in your weekly set of menus for leftovers. Don't have something new maybe created every night on the menu when you go home and cook, but plan for leftovers and store those leftovers properly and then really work them into your menus. And sometimes you can change the form that those are in, but just carefully reheated and well-stored leftovers can really save and reduce food waste. I'm going to throw this out to both of you. Is there a better container for leftovers? Because I've heard that glass doesn't absorb some of the flavors and some of the smells. 
does it really matter how you're storing it? One thing about reusable plastic is it kind of gets back with the decreasing the waste. We know that that Ziploc bags work very well for keeping food fresh, but they also come with a cost to the environment of single-use bags. So there are, are new products out now where they are rewashable and reusable storage and. I think there is some concern about plastics getting into food and different types of things. So you want to be careful what you use. And if it's called a single-use package, like a, a water bottle, for example, it says single-use. Don't plan on storing food in it. That's not what that's for, and that can leach chemicals into your food. But for the most part, there are, are just a wide array of acceptable storage things. And and I think the main thing that for most of us is we simply need to use them. And I'm not an advocate for putting a lid on hot food and put it in the refrigerator. That's not a food safe way to go about it. But cool off the food and then clap that lid down on it so that it stays fresh and is actually ready to reuse at your next meal. I think we all know that one of the big problems with leftovers is they sometimes get pushed to the back <laughs> of the refrigerator and are never seen again. At least maybe until spring when we do that annual cleaning. But how do we? <laughs> eliminate that problem? Should we be placing those in just kind of one area of the refrigerator? Yeah. And, you know, you and I have talked about storing snacks in one area of the refrigerator. I think leftovers in an area of the refrigerator is really smart. That way, if there's different meal schedules or different things going on at your house, people know that's where they look for leftovers. Or if you need to, on your menu, you know, tonight's leftover night, it's all right there together. You don't have to sort of spend the time foraging around and, and looking for what's in there. So that makes really good sense. And that gets back to that organizing your refrigerator, making sure that that your storage is good and that foods are grouped together so that what you have in there is easily seen and gets used well. It's also helpful, I think, to, in some cases, maybe not just your leftovers, but other foods that you put in your freezers or cabinets is to date them so you know when they were purchased and and also use that rule, the first in, first out and that can help with leftovers, too, to keep the things that need to be eaten first at the front of the refrigerator and, and the things that have a little longer life towards the back. And I know this comes from a food service background, but I put a date on the lids when I open condiments or um, like salsa and things because you don't want to use something that's old. And if you're likely to say, oh, I just don't know, maybe I ought to throw it out, that's wasteful. So if I put a date on the top, then I can tell exactly when I opened that and figure out how much of a lifespan it has, even if it's been stored properly. Sometimes it's just really hard to know how old your mustard is or how long that salsa jar has been in there. I think one of the reasons why Kansas is an eight-week program is because it gives people a chance to make that more of a lifestyle habit. And that's really what we're going at. And this is kind of the same way. Once you start doing some of these things, it almost becomes second nature to not waste food. I think that's a really good point. And we know that behavior change takes time. And whether that's a health practice, like exercising more or getting out and getting more physical activity, or if it's a parenting skill that you're you're working on, or if it's, you know, cutting down on food waste, those changes to become habits really do take time. Sandy, a lot of the things you've mentioned here are just the exact topics that we're covering in our weekly newsletters for the Walk Kansas program. So in addition to that healthy recipe and some nutrition tips, there'll also be the information about how to reduce food waste and store foods properly, what the dates on packages mean, a lot of just practical advice and information that can be applied. And like you said, Jeff, hopefully making that a lifelong habit after, or at least in that right direction after eight weeks of time. And again, you just like people to get signed up and take advantage of this program. That's right. Most of our counties are taking registrations through March 15, and the program starts March 17. And so in a few cases, you might be able to get in even after the start of the program. But I encourage everybody to get registered by March 15 and check with your local extension office or go online to www.watkansas.org. That's the state coordinator of Walk Kansas, Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist Sherilyn Jackson. Also on today's program, K-State Research and Extension Nutrition Specialist Sandy Proctor. Again, this year's Walk Kansas is March 17th through May 11th. To learn more or to register, go to walkkansas.org. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.